I've had quite a few requests for a commentary drive, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna bore you by driving on a 30 mile per hour road for five minutes where nothing's happening. I'm gonna cut it down to the situations where I actually have to deal with something, and I'm gonna commentate on how I'm dealing with it. I have a camera on my feet, a camera on the dials, a camera out the front window, a camera inside the car, and a camera on me. And between the cameras and my commentary, hopefully I can convey how to deal with the situations. Oh, and I'll leave in any mistakes, if I make any, which is quite likely, but we'll see. I'm actually gonna start off with the head cam in this very narrow area, because it's the only way I can show you what I'm trying to see. It's a 20 mile per hour zone, which is appropriate. I wouldn't want to do more than 20 down here. And I'm slowing down here in case someone sticks their nose out from the left. And I want to turn into this road on the left. So mirrors signal, nice and slow past the pedestrian. I'm going to get first gear because I'm going to have to see into there before I go into there. No one's trying to stick their nose out from the right. I'm going to come up alongside here now. And now I can see into the road, maximum steer and then slowly make my way into here without hitting the wall on the side or the curb on the other side of the road. I had to look into here before I pulled in here in case someone needed to come out. Now I have a very narrow bend. So I'm gonna slow right the way down to the bottom of first gear. In fact, I'm gonna push the clutch down because first gear is too fast for this. And I'm gonna slowly go around this bend expecting a car to be coming the other way. Nope, no car, so now I can carry on. And I'm gonna go straight at these crossroads, very small crossroads, keeping it left so people can come through. Very slow now. Can't see to the right. Can see a bit better to the left. So I'm gonna move forward slowly until I can see more to the right. And I can see enough now to the left and the right for me to make it forwards without making someone break and go into this new road. Another very tight bend, slowing down, going as far forward as I can to leave room for people to come through. So I'm going really far forwards, very late steer and a lot of steer all the way. So I'm leaving room for cars to come through here. And as you can see, there's a blue car coming up the hill and hopefully we should be able to go around each other how I've done this. So they're gonna come up alongside me. Well, they're parking anyway, so it's fine. And now I'm gonna take this space that they've left me. And I'm gonna keep it very slow down here in case people walk out from the sides or if doors open. I don't think I will actually reach 20 miles per hour even though that is the limit. 15 at the moment feels about right. I have a tight bend here in this 20 mile per hour zone, as you can see by the sign on the left. I'm slowing down to less than 20 because I can't really see very far around this bend, and it's not very wide. If a bus comes down here, there won't be much room. And now I can accelerate up to the speed limit, a dizzying 20 miles per hour. This is where I feel 20 is just too slow, and it takes a lot of my concentration to keep it within 20, too much of my concentration because I've been driving on this road for 18 years doing 30 and last week, or it's the week before now, I'm not sure, they made it 20. It's not easy. So I'm concentrating on the speedo or I might use cruise control to help me out. I have a part, sorry, a part car on the left now. I'm slowing down just in case someone comes the other way, down into second gear, centre right mirror. Now I'm here, I'm gonna carry on. If a car comes now, I've started, I'm gonna finish. Mirrors to move back to my side of the road. And I can see quite far down the road now past these cars. So I've checked my mirrors and I'm moving out. I have a space on the left where I can wait. So mirrors to move back in, that's centre left mirror. And moving in to wait behind these parked cars for the oncoming van. And now I've checked my mirrors to move out. I am now committed. The next space I can wait is before this van. And after that, it's before the black car. If someone comes, I could wait before the black car. I'd hope they'd let me finish though. Usually they would. And center left mirror to go back to my half of the road and trying desperately hard not to go over 20 miles per hour. Slowing down again now because I can't see past these cars very well. I can see to the left of them but there is a blind spot to the right of them, so I'm going past them cautiously. 
and now I'm accelerating as I can see it's clear and mirrors to come back in. Not worried about the crows. Crows fly out the way, pigeons don't so much, but I find if you're 15 miles per hour or less, even pigeons do move and collar doves, which are very similar to pigeons. They kind of look the same. You can't just slam on your brakes if you see a small animal in the road. Make sure you check it safe before you slow down. Depending on how close the traffic is behind, depends on how quickly or harshly you can brake. If there's no one behind, you can brake harshly to avoid the small animal. Bear in mind, even small animals can cause expensive damage to your car. When it comes to big animals like horses, cows, sheep, you do want to slam on your brakes to avoid those because they cause significant damage to your car. Hitting one can cause an even worse accident and they can cause injury. If you see one at the side of the road, slow down. Do not assume it's going to walk away from you. Assume it's going to walk in front of you. And if there is one in the road, don't just go towards it, honking your horn and shouting, get out of the way, get out of the way. They may not hear what you're saying and they probably won't understand what you're saying. Slow down, give them time to move and we have a pigeon in the road, so I'm slowing down a little bit into third gear, and it should fly out of the way now at that speed, gives it a chance to get out of the way, less road kill. It was safe for me to slow down, so I did. Coming out of the 20 zone now and into a national speed limit zone. Check my mirrors to see if anyone's overtaking, and now I can accelerate and have a little bit of freedom to drive at a speed that I deem sensible, which at the moment is just over 30, a give way sign, so I'm slowing down, going right, mirrors signal right, upside down, triangle painted on the road as well to warn me that I've got to give way. No oncoming cars, looking both ways, it's clear, so now I'm making my right turn. There was no speed limit change at that junction, so it still must be national, so I can accelerate up to a speed I feel comfortable within 60 miles per hour. But now I can see a 40, I've got to keep it within a 40, from here on. Doing 40 miles per hour approaching a bend with black and white arrows, so slowing down, down into third, and then I'll go around the bend accelerating, moving to the right a little bit to get a better view down the road to see if anyone's coming before I commit. And I'm staying over to the right a little bit here because the road on the left is not in good condition, there's not much left. I'm driving on what's left of the road as opposed to the left of the road, which is a little bit of a joke, and it's becoming a bit of a saying in the UK. If you can see it's safe, there's no oncoming cars and you have a clear bit of road, you can go around potholes. You can go on the other side of the road, that's fine, as long as it's safe. If the pothole is really bad, you may want to treat it like a parked car. What I mean by that is wait before the pothole, wait for the oncoming traffic to pass and then go around it. Bad potholes can damage your car. If the pothole is not too bad though, you can slow down and go through it slowly if you can't go around it. It's relatively narrow up ahead, so I'm staying slow. The closer I am to parked cars, the slower I go. My rule of thumb is if you're within half a metre of the parked cars, you should be second gear around 10 miles per hour. If you want to do 30 past the cars, you want to have at least a door's width, at least a metre from the cars, like I have here. Nice clear road now, so I'm keeping it close to 30 and using all of the road. I'm slowing down a little bit now because of the pedestrian. Speeding up again now. I'm not staying near the parked cars on the left because there's no need and that's where the danger is. Now there's an oncoming car, I'm slowing down because I'm gonna be nearer the parked cars. I can fit through here but slowly because I'm near the parked car and the oncoming car and now it's clear again, I'll speed back up. There's an island in the middle of the zebra crossing, which means I only have to wait for people from the right if they get to the island. And obviously I have to wait for people on the left. Check my rooms to go around the red car. I can see it's clear. I'm going faster now to make it past these cars before the oncoming car. Mirrors to come back in. And now I'm slowing down for the traffic lights. This is usually a fun road because it's very busy with a lot of parked cars. Plenty of room for me to go around these parked cars, giving them a full door's width. Mirrors to move back in. Slowing down a little bit here, because I was thinking I might be near the oncoming car, and now I've got to stop for the traffic lights. And I'm gonna stop far enough back so that it's easy for me to go round the obstruction. I don't wanna give myself a difficult, awkward angle start here. It says, when red light shows, wait here. So, 
if the lights were to go red and I've already passed that sign there that says when red light shows wait here, I don't have to stop at the traffic light. The traffic lights aren't for the light, they're for the sign. Once you pass the sign, you continue regardless of what the lights do as long as it's safe. Have my green light now, so I've checked my mirrors. Going round the roadworks, I've got some parked cars up ahead doing about 15 miles an hour at the moment. I'm staying in the middle, so I've got maximum distance from both sides. There's a space on the right where I could let oncoming cars go if I needed to. And now I would fully expect anyone coming the other way to let me finish passing the parked cars and get back to my side of the road. I haven't bothered going up to third gear there because it was downhill and second gear helped me stay slow. It's very narrow here. I'm actually in the middle of the road a little bit. If I couldn't be, then I would slow down and get nearer the curb. It's wider here now, so I no longer need to be near the middle of the road, just in time for the oncoming car. Zebra crossing, so I'm checking both sides to make sure it's clear. Looks good. I have another zebra crossing up ahead. Looks like it's gonna be clear, but I won't confirm that until I'm closer and I'm confident now I'm gonna be past the zebra crossing before anybody gets there. Turning left at the traffic lights. So center left mirror, left signal, slowing down to around about 10 miles an hour and second gear to take the bend. I'm planning to turn right at the next set of traffic lights, so mirror signal right. As it's a green light and not a green arrow, I need to wait for the oncoming car. So I'm slowing down to wait for the oncoming car, but now I have my green arrow, I can continue. If you have a green arrow to the right, the oncoming cars will have a red light. If you only have a green light, the oncoming cars will also have a green light. So you will have to wait for them before you cross their path. I'm now gonna move away from the side of the road. So clutch down, first gear, press the brake, handbrake off. Don't think the car's gonna roll. No, it doesn't, so I can be off the foot brake. No one's coming, check the blind spot, gonna signal and then use the gas on the bike point to move. I'm signaling because there is a pedestrian in front of me. If there was no one around, I wouldn't have bothered signaling. Now, speed bumps around 10 miles per hour. That's a good starting point. If it feels good at 10, that's okay. If not, go a bit slower. If you think you can go a bit faster, you can. But generally, they're between five and 15 miles an hour. I'm turning right here, I've already done my mirrors, signaled, steering late and sharp, so I go into my half of the road without cutting across the wrong side of the road. Another speed bump, so slowing down again. 10 was fine last time, so it should be fine this time. Going right at the roundabout, mirrors signal, covering the braking clutch in case I need to stop, and I do, so I stop for the car, first gear, and now it's clear, I can go into second gear, taking the third exit. So when I pass the second, mirrors and signal to leave. That center and left mirror to leave a roundabout. Ignoring the lights now. When I'm, with, when I'm within three seconds of the lights, I ignore them. Amber lasts three seconds. So if you're closer than three seconds, you'll still pass when they're amber, not when they're red. If you're more than three seconds away, then you must stop. I'm going to take the next road on the right after the traffic lights. So center right mirror, got to stop for the lights now. More than three seconds away, so they will be red when I get there. Select first gear so I'm ready to go, or I could put it in neutral and come off the clutch if I wished to save my leg and save the clutch pedal. Either one is fine, so clutch down first gear to go. I've checked both mirrors to see what's coming past mirror signal right. I would normally go into the middle, but because of the cycle lane on the other side, I can't on this occasion, so I'm staying on my half. No one coming from in front, and then steer into my half of the road, into second gear whilst I was holding the wheel steady, and then straighten the wheel after the gear change. You don't have to do it that way with the gear change. You can finish the turn and then change gear, uh, but if you feel you have the skill, you can add the steer, change the gear, then take the steer off cars on the other side of the road, so I'm expecting cars to be coming towards me, just slowing down a little bit to help this oncoming car. And now I can speed back up to the speed limit, which is 30 miles an hour. Turning left now, so center left mirror, left signal, 
I call this a jogger, which is 10 miles an hour and second gear, clutch up in second, and then I can jog into the road at about 10 miles per hour. Walkers are when you have to go slower. Normally, when you're coming to the end of the road, typically then you're gonna be less than five miles per hour and first gear. Center right mirror moving out early to see around the car, going down into second, ready to stop, but I can see, I can see it's safe to go now. So I moved out early to see if anyone was coming, but I still had time to move back in to stop if I needed to. It's better to do that than to go all the way up to the parked car and move out at the last moment when you don't have a chance to move back in. Slowing down now, waiting for the potential of oncoming cars to be coming through here to let them finish. No, no one's coming through, so now I will go through. I couldn't see if anyone was coming there, so I'll slow just in case. I can see a line in the middle of the road now, which means there's a junction. I can see the lines, the double broken line, which means give way. I'm going left, so mirror signal left. This is what I call a walker. So down to less than five, first gear, and when no one's coming, gas and bike point to carry on. No point going into second gear because it looks like I'm gonna stop again and try to keep the car moving slowly instead of starting and stopping. Now I can get the second. Cars are on the other side of the road, but with all the cars in front of me, it looks like there is gonna be no oncoming cars. The truck is already waiting. Hopefully the road doesn't get blocked here. I'm gonna to go to the left to try and give the truck room to come through and that'll get everything moving. In hindsight, if I would have waited back before all the parked cars on the right, I, it would have been easier to let the truck through, but I didn't foresee it getting blocked as it did. That was quite unfortunate and rather unlikely. Don't think I've had that happen there before. No one coming at the moment, so carrying on. White car is waiting. Speed limit's 30, I'm doing 24. Oncoming car is slowing down, so I'm not gonna bother accelerating now. And maintaining this steady speed around this bend. Slowing down for the next bend. I think second gear here, because I'm gonna be slower. Clutch up, go around in second gear. Expecting cars to be coming towards me, and they are. So I'm gonna slow down and wait. Looks like they're pulling in, so first gear and I will continue. And at the end of the road, I'm going left. So centre left mirror, left signal, slowing down to a walking speed by the triangle on the road, into first gear, walking round the bend, the mouth of the junction, checking to see if it's safe to go, ready to go. But there is a car coming, so I'm waiting. There's actually several. Also being careful of the zebra crossing on my left. If the lollipop is down, that means it's a green light. If the lollipop is up, that's the equivalent to a red light. I can go after this truck, so gas, bike point, pull out into my half of the road, zebra crossing is still clear, up to second gear, and now I can make my way up to a comfortable speed. The maximum here is 30 miles per hour. Gonna turn right at the traffic lights up there. Need to slow down to let this car through first. Cars were on both sides of the road, and as they got there first, usually you should let them go first. So mirrors, signal right, slowing down to stop at the first line. I should only stop at the second line if I've already passed, well, we shouldn't say already passed, but the lights change to red and I don't have time to stop by the first line. Then I can stop by the second line. But if you can stop by the first, you should. First gear whilst you're waiting, hold the clutch down if you'd like. I prefer to keep it in neutral and be off the clutch. That's better for the clutch pedal. It's also better for my leg. Uh, you can have the handbrake up and be off the brake as well if you wish, but that's more to do when you get going. Usually I just hold the brake down and have the handbrake off. I have a video about um, having the handbrake on or off at junctions. To be fair, the video is not solely about that, it's about several things, but it does mention it in that video. I'll leave a link to that video in the top right hand corner of your screen if you're interested. So clutch down first gear, time to go. I can go when it's green, I can't go when it's red and amber. Going into the middle now, clutch down, waiting for the oncoming cars because I have a green light and not a green arrow. I'm waiting far enough back so oncoming cars can turn before me and go that way if they need to. Now the lights have changed, there should be no more oncoming cars and the cars already waiting in the middle of the junction have time to finish. 
I want to pull over at the side of the road, so centre left mirror. There are cars behind, so I'm going to indicate left, slow the car down, get the clutch down so it doesn't stall, get my nose in before where I want to stop, and then roll forwards two to three car lengths to straighten up. When I'm happy with my position, finish the stop and then secure the car. That's handbrake up so you can come off foot brake and neutral so you can come off a clutch and then cancel the signal. And now's a good time to get out and have a look at the parking restrictions to see if you're actually allowed to park here. There is some here, but they are, they are specific times and I don't know the times for all of them off by heart. Have a give way line here. No point signaling because I can only go left. No one coming, so I can continue. And I'm gonna turn left at this roundabout, first exit. So center left mirror, left signal, slowing down for the bend. It looks quite tight here, so I'm gonna go quite slow, making sure I stay in my lane. I'm in second gear, covering the brake, covering the clutch, ready to stop, having a look. I've got to stop, so clutch down and brake to finish. And stop, first gear, but now I can go. Gas and bike point to go, into second gear, and this is my exit, that road on the left isn't an exit, that is a road on the left after the exit. I was still signalling as I passed it, but it doesn't matter because no one can pull out from there and you kind of need the signal to leave the roundabout, so there's not a lot you can do. Green light now, the traffic light, so I'm going to continue. It's 40 mile per hour road, so I'll use a little bit more revs than usual to get some speed up. Usually in this car I change up at around about two, just a bit more than 2,000 RPM but if I'm trying to accelerate more quickly, I'll take it to three or four, maybe all the way around to six if I really want to go flat out. Starting to use the brake now because the hill is going to speed me up and I can see the car in front looked like it wanted to change lanes, so I was backing off a little bit just in case. Slowing down to go ahead of this roundabout, second exit, into second gear, staying in my lane, not steering too early on the bend, ready to stop, looking, looks good, gas and go. Indicate left now and past the first exit to take the second exit. New speed limit, 40. There was a 30 sign before the roundabout and now there's a 40 after. I want the right lane, I can make it before the van behind, so I'm going to change lane. And I'm going to slow down a little bit here because the car moved out in front of me and just in case somebody else does that. I'm using the right lane because I want to go right at the next roundabout. I'm not going to signal. I won't signal in traffic until I'm about three cars back, three or four cars back from the junction, clutch down so I don't stall. And I'm actually going to go to neutral and come off the clutch because I can see I'm going to be waiting here for a few seconds and I don't want to hold the clutch down. Clutch down into first, now I can go. I'm going to try and get the car moving and come off the clutch. The car will do four miles per hour if I'm off the clutch, no slower. But if I do this, I don't have to keep stopping and starting, I can just let the car move at four miles per hour, I'm not even on the gas you see. Most cars will do this, four or five in first gear if you're off the pedals. Gap's getting a bit big now, so use a bit of gas to close the gap up. Off the gas again now, and I might not have to push the clutch down, I might just be able to keep rolling, covering the clutch just in case. Yeah, looks like I'm gonna to have to do that here. But that was um, many stops and starts I avoided there, just by being smart with my speed and keeping it slow instead of trying to stay on the rear bumper of the car in front. There's a very faded yellow box junction up ahead, so I'm leaving a big gap to make sure I can pass it before I go into it, I can, and now I'll go faster. I'm allowed up to 40, secure cars on the left. I'm actually gonna go into the right lane just to make sure as many cars as possible get past the green light. That's why there's two lanes here, to get twice as many cars past the green light and then once you pass the lights, and then you merge again later. Everyone's staying in the left lane, uh, but that's not actually how you should do things. You should use both lanes and get most of the traffic passed. But I am in Britain, and we are British. We like to queue. I think people see it as jumping the queue, but in fact, it's not jumping the queue. It's just increasing traffic flow. The hatched markings in the middle of the road are to keep oncoming traffic away from each other. So if someone needs to use the middle to pass a cyclist or if they're waiting to turn right, there's a space there for you to wait. So you shouldn't drive in it unless you need to. 
for example, overtaking a cyclist or waiting to turn right there, two reasons you may need to use it. I'm trying to anticipate the speed of the cars ahead. I don't want to start and stop, so if I see the cars slowing down, I back off before I catch up with them, and hopefully by the time I do catch up with them, they're moving again and I don't have to stop. Like now, it's backing off a little bit, have to go down a gear because I'm getting a bit too slow for fourth, but I didn't have to touch the brake. I don't think I touched the brake there at all, just came off the gas because I did it early. Going to use the cruise control to help me stay within the speed limit. It's 30, don't need to be concentrating on that as much now. And I'm going towards Ipswich on the sign, which is ahead. Usually left lane for ahead, but this green sign on the left here says I need to use the right lane to go ahead. So I, I will do that. Pressing the brake now to turn the cruise off and slowing down for the junction. I call this a jogging junction, which means around 10 and second gear. I'm already ignoring the lights just as they changed. I'd have had to brake quite a bit harder to make that. And I can go, no one's coming. So gas, I've already got the clutch up. Carry on, indicate left to leave the roundabout when I'm past the exit before the one I want. Going left at the roundabout, first exit. I can see the arrow on the lane. I need the left lane. Left lane only to go left here, so mirror signal. And again, it's a jogging junction, so second gear, clutch up, around 10-ish miles per hour. No one's coming, signal canceled, so I put it back on. And this is a slip road onto a fast dual carriageway. So I'm gonna use more revs and get the speed up. 70 mile per hour limit now. Matching the speed of the cars on the main road. It's only one lane here, although it's wide. Indicating right, staying at their speed, staying, oh, coming into a 40 now. So I'm slowing down to the 40, which is really dangerous. Oh, the car behind doesn't like me slowing down to the 40 there. Probably did it a bit too much actually. That's because I was concentrating on the car behind approaching me quickly, but I've got to be legal, especially on video. So that's a 40 sign, I'm doing 40. <clears throat> Even though, in my opinion, it would have been safer for me to slow down less quickly than that. I mean, how about that? 70 mile an hour road, and then you get a 40 limit just as you're merging into it. I think uh, some warning on the slip road would have been a good idea and I've just merged from one road to another there as well, so I signaled, made sure it's safe and moved over. Using the cruise control now to keep me at 40 miles per hour. Slip road merging with the main road now. I'm gonna make sure the car in front can move in front of me. The car behind me is going behind me. It's important to help when a slip road is merging with the main road, either slow down or change lanes. Let's try another slip road. So I'm going left here, ramp ahead. Where's the ramp? Slowing down a bit here, I think that's it. Not too bad. And let's get up to speed. It's a 70 mile per hour road again. Hopefully there won't be a 40 change just as I'm trying to merge. I'm matching the speed of the traffic. This is what you should do when you're merging with high speed cars, is you do the same speed as them, I'm indicating now, and that way you're all stationary in relation to each other. You stay next to a gap, sideways glance, and merge out. And that's the safe way to do it. I'm now going to leave the dual carriageway via a slip road. Usually you would signal somewhere around the 300 yard marker, but we don't have a 300 yard marker here. We don't have a 200 yard marker either. They're both gone. We just have a 100 yard marker, which is here. I think people have hit the other markers. People have hit that one as well. Doesn't seem well. This is actually one of the more dangerous roads in the country, actually. So I signal to leave left the slip road and then I start slowing down on the slip road. I try to keep my speed up on the main dual carriageway. Slowing down now towards the queue, I can see a 40 sign, so I know from this point onwards it's 40. Down into second gear and clutch up, just in case, you never know, they might get going, but they're not, so clutch down so I don't stall and stop the car. And I'm gonna put it in neutral, I do not know how long I'm gonna be here. I'm a few cars back as well, so I've got plenty of time to get ready when the lights go green. 
I'm going to go ahead here at this roundabout, second exit, and take the slip road back onto the dual carriageway again, where we will have to change lane shortly after merging with the dual carriageway because if I don't change lane, I'll end up going the wrong way. Lights are green now, so clutch down first gear, gas and bike point to move. Usually left lane to go ahead, staying straight, staying in my lane. And then I can indicate left now to leave. Already ignoring the lights. It's one lane here, so I'll be in the middle, although there is markings, ghost markings in the middle where it used to be two lanes. Another fast road, so get the speed up, match the speed of the traffic, indicate right to warn people I'm coming. Doing the same speed as everyone now, sideways glance and using all the slip road to give people on the main road time. Now I have this very short broken line on my right, all those tiny little white lines. That means this road is going somewhere else soon and I don't want to go somewhere else. I want to stay on the main road. So I'm going to indicate to move to lane two, sideways glance, the truck behind is waiting for me. So I'll move in front of the truck and change lane. And now I can continue on the A12. If I didn't do that, you'll see in a second that road will branch and go elsewhere, as you can see that's happening now. Keeping a nice distance between me and the car in front, minimum two second gap in the dry, a minimum four second in the wet. They are sensible distances. A little bit more is playing it even more safe. Bear in mind, you're a human being, you're gonna make mistakes. Even if you want to focus 100% time, 100% of the time on the traffic in front of you, you're gonna be distracted sometimes by something. And if you've got that bit of extra space, if something catches your eye, maybe a hot air balloon or something, and just catches your eye and the car in front starts braking as you look at that, you have a little bit more time to stop when you look forwards again. Let's be realistic now. We're not robots. Give yourself a margin for error. To judge how many seconds there is between you and the car in front, when the car in front passes an object, count how many seconds it takes you to pass that object. So the red car in front has gone past the 40 sign now, one second, two second, three second, then I pass the 40 sign. So I had about a three second gap. And if a car in front pulls in front of you, don't slow down harshly, just go a little bit slower and let the car gradually pull away from you until you get your safe two to four second gap, depending on the weather. I'm now on a national speed limit, single carriageway, rural road. I'm turning right, mirror signal, slowing down, a jogging junction, second gear, clutch up around 10 miles per hour, turning into my half. No speed limit changes around this junction, so it's still national speed limit, which is 60 miles per hour for a car. And I've got a nice straight here, so I'm accelerating up to a comfortable speed which for me feels about this. Slow down a little bit for the bird. The bird will move out of the way though, magpies do. And I'm giving this car time to get back to their side of the road. Down into third gear and I can start accelerating again. Nothing in my way at the moment. You see it's a 60 road, but you don't have to do 60. Do the speed that's safe. Trouble is when people drive like idiots and then we get lower speed limits because they're not being responsible and we all have to go really slow all the time. But uh, safe, for me, safe for me to go fast now, so I'm doing over 50 miles per hour. Slowing down now for the bend. Lots of birds in the road today. Very sharp bend there now. Into second gear. And I think I was doing 50 something miles per hour on that straight, but now I'm doing 16. That's called sensible driving. You drive to the road, to what you can see. I've got a better view now, so I can go faster. And now I'm slowing down. I've got up to 37 there. I feel like I'm at a sensible speed at the moment for how far I can see. I'm trying to keep it left on the bend, but when I'm on a straight, I can use more of the road and go faster. Slowing down towards the bend now, staying left a little bit more on the bend, so I'm out of the way of cars. No gear change necessary at the moment. Third gear is still happy. Looking at the space, not the oncoming car, through the space. And I don't want to go much faster now because we've got these oncoming cars and it's not a very wide road. I can go up the fourth gear though. 
doing about 35 at the moment, slowing down for the bend again into third gear, doing all the braking and gear changes in a straight line and then using the gas pedal on the bend, trying to stay on your half around the bend. I can go a bit fast now, I have more space, there's no oncoming cars. Although I can't see very far at the moment, so I'm only going 40. Nice little straight here, so I can go a little bit faster. And now I'm braking, got to nearly 50 there. And I think third gear maybe, fourth gear probably was all right to be fair, but I did it just in case I went a little bit slower. I feel comfortable at this speed now, given how far I can see. It's a more narrow road, and the road on the left is very broken. Uh, so I don't want to drive on that. If I have to drive on that, I'll slow down to a low speed first. I will be, to drive on that road, I'd be certainly less than 10. Slow down for the van there because it was narrow and I had to get near the broken road again. If you need to go onto the gravel like we have on the side here to give way to larger oncoming vehicles, I recommend you get down to walking speed. For five miles an hour, pop it in the first gear uh, don't do it at speed, you haven't got grip on that stuff. You need to be slow so you have control of the car. Down into third in a straight line, and now I've got a good view again, I can go faster. And that's pretty much what you do on these roads. You speed up when you can see, and you slow down when you can't. Your ceiling is 60 miles per hour, which is plenty, so you rarely have to worry about that. Just uh, make the most of the road and do what's comfortable. Haven't seen any speed limit changes and I was on a national speed limit road. This is now a dual carriageway because there's an island that separates the oncoming cars. It's nothing to do with how many lanes there is. That means it's a 70 road for cars. And it's safe to do 70, so I will wind it up to 70. Um, if it was raining here, I would not be doing 70. This road is prone to well, I say flooding, it's not a true flood, but very big puddles. When it's raining down here, I rarely go much more than 50 miles per hour. I mean, a little bit of rain doesn't really matter, but when it's raining properly and you're getting those big puddles, it's not safe to do 70. I'm gonna use cruise control now just to help me. Stick to 70. I'm gradually catching the car in front, uh, but there's a traffic light sign up ahead, so I'm probably gonna be slowing down for the lights soon. So I'm turning the cruise control off, letting the car slow down. There could be a queue of cars around this bend. Traffic light sign is warning me that that might be the case. Haven't touched the gas for a while, just letting friction slow me down. And we're coming into a 50 zone now. I'm approaching a series of mini roundabouts and a 30 sign. Um, there's a queue of cars, so I don't really have to worry too much about getting it within the speed limit because I am practically at a standstill. Now I'm uphill in traffic. I'm gonna try and keep the car rolling. That's what I normally do. If I have to stop, I will. Uh, don't yet, covering the braking clutch just in case I do. I'm gonna let the car roll. There's a bit of a gap opening up between me and the van in front. I'm reluctant to close it until it gets a bit bigger. Now I will because I know if I close it and the van stops, I will have to stop. But saves your clutch, saves your leg. Try and keep your car rolling if you can. Going right at the mini roundabout, so center right mirror, right signal, now I'm getting close. There is a zebra crossing, I need to keep that clear. Clutch is down now, so I can go slower than first can handle. Gas and bite points move forwards. Near the giveaway line now, I have a shield on the roundabout, that van, so I can go round. Now I'm a shield for the car next to me. Mirror signal left for the next mini roundabout, straight into the left lane, I'm going left. I'm in second gear, so I'm jogging, and I've got a black car coming around the roundabout, that's my shield, so I'll carry on. Mirror signal right, straight into the right lanes, go right at the next mini roundabout. Helps if you know where you're going on this one. And now I'm gonna stop because there is cars from the right and no shields, and my exit road is getting blocked and I don't wanna block the roundabout. So I'm going to have to wait until the cars get moving now. Okay, looks like they're moving and no cars currently from the right. So I can go. And you don't have to signal to leave mini roundabouts. Or should I say you shouldn't really signal to, to leave mini roundabouts. Your signal on approach lets people know 
where you're going because it's so small if you signal left everyone knows you're going left if you signal right everyone knows you're going right on big roundabouts you need to signal to leave because no one knows where you started from you're just a car coming round the roundabout uh, signaling left to let them know which exit you're going to take is helpful i'm approaching a roundabout up a fairly steep hill so i'm not going to need to use the brakes very much just coming off the gas will do most of the slowing down in fact i had to press the gas there a little bit to stop me slowing down too much little bit of brake now into second but not much brake needed there at all uh, no one coming so i can go in fact i pushed the brake a little bit but i don't think i actually used them i didn't feel any brake pads contacting the wheels and this time it's helpful to signal to leave the roundabout because not everyone knows where i've started it's a big roundabout so it's helpful to tell people where you're leaving so other people can then enter I'm now approaching the famous Greenstead roundabout of Colchester from a different direction. It's just a series of mini roundabouts. It's a 30 sign before them here, so I know it's 30 from here. Going right, not going to bother signalling. I was about to signal, but traffic lights just gone left. So, sorry, just gone left. What am I talking about? The traffic lights have just gone red. So I'll wait until they go green before I put the signal on. First gear, they've gone green now, so signal right right lane for going right even though it says ahead on the road and i do have an exit road which is nice but i have cars coming from the right i'm going to leave it in first gear so i'm ready to go lots of cars coming from the right at the moment and no cars coming from the left to block them off that's the last car i can go and go round the roundabout and into the right lane because i'm going ahead at the next roundabout you can use both lanes to go ahead on this mini roundabout but i want to go right at the one after so being in the right lane helps i can't go and i can't think about going until i can clear the roundabout the van is impeding the roundabout a little bit although to be fair he's not doing too much harm because if someone wants to go around behind him and go into the lane where the motorbike is they can he's only actually blocking his own lane he's not really blocking anyone else but if i went on there i would be blocking someone else so i've got to wait put it in neutral so i can rest my leg and now I've got some space, no cars from the right. You can usually fit three cars here. My back is hanging into the roundabout a bit, but I'm not actually blocking anyone. So that should be fine. Going right now, so I'm indicating right. And lots of cars from the right. The exit road is clear, which is good. It's the first thing I really need to look at here because often the exit road isn't clear. It's starting to get blocked up now because the lights are red. They've just gone green, so the exit road should start to flow again. I've got a van coming from left, which is a shield. So I'm going to go now because the van is the shield and the exit road is flowing into the left lane because I'm going ahead at the next roundabout and I'm ignoring the lights now. So if they change, I'm still going bit of a pointless gear change there maybe no i can still use seconds so that was worth it and no one coming from the right so i can go staying in my lane i'm not going to straight line this roundabout and cut up cars next to me indicating left to leave now and there's only one lane here so i can use all the space and accelerate up to the speed limit which is 30 because i feel i can easily do that speed here town center on the sign it's ahead now, it looks right in real life, but the sign says it's ahead. You should go by the sign. And as the sign says it's ahead, that means it's the left lane. There are actually two lanes here, but the line has faded. No one's coming from the right, so I'll keep it left in the left lane. Signal left now to leave, and then I'll exit the roundabout. So often you'll see that your exit on the roundabout looks like it's a bit to the right, but the sign says it's straight. Go by the sign for lane choice. And that's how I typically drive around Colchester. The main difference is I usually rev match my downshifts. I didn't want to include that in this video just because it will make it more complicated than it needs to be. If you're interested in rev matching, I'll leave a link to a video up there in the top right hand corner of your screen. If you think the video is helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you're looking for car insurance, check out Collingwood and Confused in the description. If you're learning to drive and want to insure yourself on somebody else's car, Collingwood are there for you because you can do so without affecting the owner's policy, which takes away some of the stress from the owner of the car when you're using their car to learn to drive. At the moment, via the link, there's up to 35% off and a £20 Amazon gift card. 
If you want to insure your own car, check out the link to confuse.com because you fill out one quote form and get loads of quotes back from many insurers to compare who's cheapest. And you can change your car on that quote as many times as you like, which is handy when you're trying to find out how much it costs to insure different cars. Using the links doesn't cost you anything, but it does support the channel, so thank you very much. Subscribe to get my future videos, and until the next one, cheerio.